What's good? It's your boy J. Kenneth, 518 Cents. And we gonna do something a little different on this channel, gang. Get ready for it. We gonna review a movie that I just watched. And we gonna tell you how the popular opinion about it is completely wrong. Everybody wanna praise this movie like it's a phenomenal masterpiece. And the underlying story is, what, because it's a feminist point of view? If big bad Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't do it, and big bad Danny Glover with the 50 cal strap can't do it. We all know a little tiny petite 100 pound teenage girl with uh, defiance can definitely do it. That's that feminist be strong. You know what I'm saying? You gotta try to undermine guys every chance they get in order to build up a female. Which I'm kind of mad because they could have had this play out where... It was still able to build up the female, but not have it be on some feminist hijack plot point of view. Let's make this girl look strong while we make all these guys look retarded. So it starts out with them um, hunting a lion that done attacked one of their members. And she wants to be a part of the hunt, but they won't allow her to. She actually ends up sneaking along on the hunt, albeit against the wishes of the other members she gets her chance to finally fight the lion just for her to fall on her head literally he ends up bringing her out of harm's way and goes back for the hunt on the lion and he ends up catching the lion to kill it he comes back to the tribe to show hey i don't eliminated the threat and all of them are super ecstatic like okay we don't eliminate the threat we're gonna now label you as the war chief which makes her even more bitter for some reason Albeit, it, her reason, I guess, is because the predator is still out there. But nobody knows that at this point. She hasn't seen them at this point. So it's like, it almost seems like she's mad towards her brother for being good at what he does. From this point forward, I hope you like your eggs with a side of forced down feminist point of view if they were in a predator movie. Because the whole movie from this point forward is about undermining the brother and showing why she's so strong and he's not so now she defies her whole entire tribe after her brother done told her you're not ready for this you can't do that i had to come save you and he's right he did have to come save her and then the mother also explained to her after she awoken from getting hurt you know why we hunt right and she didn't and the mom told her we do this to survive we don't do this to be prideful or to show that we're worthy and her reasons for it are all wrong so as she goes on the hunt, she ends up coming across trials and tribulations along the way. And one of them being a big bear that ends up chasing her. And this was the bear that everybody was trying to make it seem like, hey, you're just freaking out over this big bear. She ends up finding out that she's actually right about everything she done thought when the bear's chasing her. And she ends up running away to this beaver dam. As the bear's about to get her, she finally sees the reveal of this creature that's been hunting her, which ends up being the predator. It's, you know I mean, probably one of the best scenes in the movie with the blood dripping. And as we're going to see with a common theme of her character, she's always running away from the conflict. She's never trying to face it head on. And I guess that's the moral of the story for this whole movie is her finding herself, her inner strength. And as she does... What she does so well in this movie is run from the problem, run from the conflict. You know, a strong woman. I understand Kamachi's survival, that's the, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's also to eliminate the threat. So at this point, her tribal members try to come and take her back because her brother said we need to find her. And she doesn't want to go back. So she literally starts fighting her own tribal members just so she can defy them and go off and put everybody in jeopardy so she can try to show hey i'm worthy of the hunt when once again the overall theme is not being worthy it's hunting to survive and live what are we gonna do in a part of the world where there are no rules we pick up their trailer the chopper run them down grab those hostages before anybody knows we were there and her being the strong feminist that she is you know female power if a guy can't do it a woman always can she gets her whole entire tribe that came out to save her killed and she gets captured by the frenchman in a rabbit trap as she continues her special theme of always running from the conflict and letting the guys face the problems head on for them to die 
while she continues to find her inner strength at the cost of her tribal mates. I guess in order to be a strong female, you know, an independent female, you got to let the guys learn a valuable lesson and die in the process. So that way they can see the almighty woman was right. Deep in the jungle, where nothing that lives is safe, you lose it here. You're in a world of hurt. Showtime, kid. Knock, knock. So after her running away and not helping her tribal mates fight against the predator and basically letting them die, after she gets captured, she finds out her brother is captured as well. Because, you know, if she's captured, her brother has to be captured so that way it doesn't make her look inferior. One of the Frenchmen who speaks Comanche or English tells her, hey, you should help us. And she says no. So they end up using her and her brother for bait after cutting her brother's chest so he would be bleeding. This is where the movie starts to go real left real quick. So the Frenchman who used them as bait didn't really work to be honest, but they end up capturing the predator with the bear trap that they done caught the girl with. And all suddenly they basically got him dead to rights. They got the trap over him. They about to pull it and capture him. And from this point forward, it gets on some Halloween kills ish. And you want to know what I mean by that? So you're going to tell me the same Frenchman that were able to capture her and her brother, who's the war chief, all saying they're incompetent, can't hunt, don't know how to use their weapons, and they go to shoot the predator and actually end up shooting themselves in the head. That's where it's just like you discredited everything you done built up before that by making all these characters look incompetent and weak just for what? The girl to look like she's the strongest one by not being stupid? When in all reality, she's just as incompetent. Every time she had a chance to help, she either froze up or couldn't get it situated in time for it to be effective. What do you know? Her strongest character trait actually comes in handy. She's able to save her brother and help them run away. And not only in the process is she able to put a little fear in him by putting the rope that has them tied up in a bear trap, thinking that their hand's going to get caught just for her to able to do it. And in the process, her brother even admits, hey, your way of trying to get the lion actually worked. You started it, I finished it. I'm sure some females' minds will be blown that the brother can actually acknowledge when he was in the wrong and that his sister has always been there to save him and help him and actually contributed to catching the lion and that she was right. Because at the end of the day, they family. So why does he care that she's a female? He's constantly been looking out for her throughout this whole entire movie, yet they continue to shit on the brother's character for no reason. Now... What are we gonna do? In a part of the world where there are no rules. So her and her brother escape and leave all the Frenchmen to be brutally slaughtered down there because the movie made the Frenchmen as repulsive as possible. And she goes to the camp on her own. And she literally is about to activate her John Wick powers and dismantle all the leftover Frenchmen at the camp, which was out of character. She was always able to defend herself, but she wasn't able to just straight dismantle people. That was the whole problem. She could never finish the job. But now all of a sudden, she's starting to become the character that the movie wants you to see her as the strong independent woman that can do it on her own and she's ready to hunt so once she finally eliminates all the frenchmen the guy that originally had talked to her earlier saying hey you should help us now comes asking her for help because he's injured which this is where that gun from predator 2 comes in and I don't know. I thought it was always from a pirate. I didn't know it was from some Frenchman hunters and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Maybe I just was misinformed or whatever. But that's besides the point. So now this gun's supposedly supposed to help even the odds. And he's going to teach her how to use it. He tells her only if she helps heal his injury, which she does just that, so she can get an upgraded weaponry to try to fight off this big predator. And he tells her how to do it, but it's going to be easier said than done because this is all new to her and her people. She ends up leaving the Frenchman to meet his fate, 
because now that she got the upgraded weaponry, she remembers what her brother said. Hey, if it can bleed, we can kill it. So her and her brother are trying to find ways to outsmart and beat the predator. And she feels as this gives her a better chance of reaching that goal. And this is where the movie starts to go left quick and pisses me off. Because the brother finally comes there and saves the sister once again. And they're supposed to work as a team. And she freezes up again over the gun. She's so focused on the gun that she forgets to actually just try to follow through on the plan with her brother. At this point, it almost seems like the sister sees that the brother has the predator on the ropes and decides, hey, I'm going to let you do it on your own. Because he ends up flanking the predator away from her. He ends up getting his attention and like starting to draw damage from the predator. The predator even pulls out his shield and he's still getting the spear on him, stabbing him. And now he's got him on the ropes because he hits off his helmet. And now he goes to fight with him on the floor, on the ground. And all the sister has to do is grab that helmet. If she grabs that helmet, the predator's main strengths that are making it so hard to beat are all gone. And now it's going to be like a fair fight to the death. And it seems like she's not interested in doing that. An elite rescue squad. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. So as the brothers got the predator dead to rights and about to finish him off with no thanks to the sister, the predator goes invisible. Now the brother's looking for him everywhere, doesn't understand. The sister's saying, oh, hey, we gotta go. Let's look, Let's go, let's run. And he tells her, like, no, I'm not gonna. And she says, like, no, we have to go. We gotta go now. Like, we're gonna, he's gonna kill us. And he basically says, this is as far as I go. I will not go any further. I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna fight to my death or I'm gonna kill this thing. Right as he goes to say that, what happens? Predator reappears and kills him. What does the sister do? She stands there and looks at him, still with the gun in her hand, letting her brother die. So that way she could become the strong, independent woman that she was meant to be. What does the sister do? She points the gun at the predator. Once again, the gun that she has not been able to fire not once since she has had it and been shown how to shoot it. The predator, being who he is, decides, hey, it's time for this girl to die. And I'm kind of agreeing with him at this point. But hey, little do we know, there's going to be a surprise hero to come save her once again. If this is what a strong female character is, I don't know what a weak one looks like, to be honest. But hey, who better than to come to her aid than the person that she's been bitter about this whole time who has nothing but her best interests at heart? Her dying brother on his last leg stabs the predator in his leg. After the brother basically sacrifices his own life for his sister that's so strong and independent, she ends up sneaking and running away from the predator as usual. All the people wondering, hey, when does she become this strong, independent woman that's going to fight back the predator and actually kill him? And I was wondering that same thing at this point. I'm like, hey, there's only like 10, 15 minutes left at most. Like, when, when? Now, what are we gonna do? In a part of the world where there are no rules. So as Arnold Schwarzenegger just told you, now she's gonna activate her Arnold Schwarzenegger powers. First, she gotta wash off her brother's blood that's basically on her hands, the irony in that scene. Before we can get to the final climax of this movie, they make it back to the Kamachi tribe to inform the mother that her son has been killed in battle. And now she's devastated. She has found out her son, who just became war chief, has now been killed. And her daughter is still somewhere out there. Becoming that strong, independent woman, you know. So now she could finally be on the hunt for the predator and get her revenge at the cost of her brother's life. Now that she's regrouped, gained her composure, her and her dog are on the hunt for the predator. And while they're hunting for the predator, they find the Frenchman that trapped her and her brother and basically got her brother killed by putting them in that scenario, I guess. So she decides to try to shoot him with the gun, albeit he's so far away that Maybe it finally comes to her senses that, hey, 
I haven't been able to use this gun the whole entire movie. Let me not waste the one bullet I have all the way across the pond. She then uses all of her knowledge of the land, the spices, all of that to get the one up on the Frenchman when he goes to sleep. And she's going to use him the same way that he used her and her brother. As the Frenchman starts to wake up, he realizes there's something wrong with his leg. He has a wound on his leg. The sister is now using him as bait. Like I said, just like the way that he did to them. She deliberately lets him crawl to get towards the gun. Because this way, he's going to be perceived as a threat when the predator comes around. And she basically lets him know, I'm not perceived as a threat. Which will actually come to her advantage when the predator finally comes to the camp and sees the Frenchman with the rifle pointed in his direction, not realizing that she's there because she took that medicine that chills out the blood and he can only see what's hot. So therefore, his foot right there, she moves it and he walks by and comes up on the Frenchman to kill him. Once the Frenchman is dead, she finally takes that as an opportunity to get the advantage on the Predator and finally figures out how to shoot the gun. She shoots the Predator in the back of the head and his helmet falls off now. This is the same mask that dropped earlier that she could have grabbed and basically the brother probably could have defeated the Predator. But no, we can't have that happen. We're not trying to let him shine. So now she's able to finally grab the mask and use it as a weapon to her advantage. Predator bleeding from his head and the mask off, he now doesn't have all these advantages over her and has to fight like a warrior one-on-one. -on -one. Predator madder than ever because she done shot him in the back of his head. He done lost his mask. So now basically he's vulnerable because he can be hurt and can't go into his invisibility cloaking phase to hide from her. So she's setting up traps all over the place. She's basically using the environment to her advantage. He doesn't have his mask anymore. She's the one that has the mask. So she feels like she's in control and now is ready to take the fight to the Predator. Finally. It only took her about the whole movie with 10 minutes to go for her to finally do that. But hey, like they say, late bloomers, better late than never. Now he's playing her game. He follows the trail of blood up until it gets to around a tree where she is. And now you see she literally has the upper hand on him as she gets ready to run down this tree and jump down towards him and strike another blow to his head, hurting him even more. She then sees it's not going to be that easy as he throws her down to the ground and she feels the pain. The predator actually ends up having her on the ropes within two inches of her head getting cut off and all suddenly her dog comes out of nowhere to save the day and she's able to continue on the fight and try to lead him towards her trap because she has a trap of the mask waiting for him which doesn't make sense to me because it's his mask why would it ever attack him you could say that he's a threat to her but it's his mask so his mask should never perceive him as a threat but that's besides the point. She ends up getting him to come to her trap and fall in the mud. The movie tries to fake you out like if he had just died there just for him to pop back up out the mud. But that's what she wants. She has her trap behind him waiting for him to react to her. The predator thinks he has her dead to rights and gets ready to shoot her. And as he shoots her, the mask points at him and perceives him as a threat, which makes no sense because it's his mask. And now the arrow that he just shot at her avoids and misses her, comes back around and shoots and kills the predator. Once his own mask was the reason he was killed, I was I had enough of this movie. I was like, I absolutely hate this movie. It's his mask, his technology. It's set to him. Regardless if she was able to finesse it, she didn't recode it or anything. So why would it ever attack him on any level, no matter what? Then it cuts to the mother... And all of a sudden, the mother realizes, oh, my daughter's walking up. And what does the daughter have? She has the predator's head in her hand. She is now accepted by her mother in the village. Even though she got her brother killed, her son, it's all good because the daughter is now a strong, independent woman. So the legendary gun that was barely explored and only used for one important scene 
is now given to the mother in the village elder. And the hero, the dog in my opinion, and now the daughter who insults and injury is the war chief. Like, come on, bro. So that's the prey movie that everybody's praising, which it's not like horrible, but it's not even close to as good as people are making it seem. It's definitely not better than the second one, not even close to the first one. It's a lot better than what we've been getting, but movies have been so bad that even a mediocre movie nowadays is considered good. What I would give it for a rating, I would probably say out of five stars, three, maybe three and a half. Certain things probably would keep it from me giving it a three and a half, more so sticking to a three. I would definitely recommend to watch it and form your own opinion, but that's how I feel. All I say is form your own opinion. Don't hate on it because I hate it. Don't like it because they say to like it. Watch it and see how you feel for yourself. Form your own opinion.